Alright, what's up? It's Vince here again, and we're doing the race with the Dodge Cornet versus the Mazda Cosmo 110S. Um, Dodge Cornet, we'll talk about a little bit. This is a 426 Hemi car, fully loaded, everything. Gotta be over $4,000 from what I estimate, which is deferred to the cost of a house back in 1970. Dodge Cornet 1970 also has a um, Bumblebee style grill on the front of it. Very controversial, either you love it or you hate it. But that's why we have the 68 and 69s, right? Uh, plum crazy purple for this one. It's got to have somewhere between 373 and 340 or 330 gears in it. Because it does like over 140, 150 miles an hour in the game. Um, Chrysler experimented with Hemi engines uh, during the war effort. Made V16s and V12s that were supposed to go into planes. The, the, uh, the latter, the V16, was uh, rated at 2,500 horsepower at the time, but they never got to use it. Uh, Chrysler then uh, went to full Hemi production in 1951 and put them in cars, starting out with 180 horsepower and ended up with 390 horsepower by 57, 58 when they stopped making them. And they switched to wedge engines because the Hemis got too expensive to make. However, the first gen Hemi became very popular in drag racing, top field drag cars with the engines in front before they switched to the back during the uh, 1980s, I believe. It took them that long to do it. And they realized, hey, maybe the engines blow up in front of us. Maybe we should put it behind us. That way it doesn't blow up in our faces. Uh, back to the Hemi. They went to 426 Hemis in 1964. It's based off the RB block, which is the 3D3s, 440s for the cars. Engines like that, so that's the block, and then it has its own unique head to it, which is the Hemi spherical head. Uh, it was designed in nine months, one Daytona 123, and they didn't put them into production cars until 66, and they stopped making them in 71, though there are 72 uh, model year cars that have Hemis. There's apparently three Plymouth GTXs or Plymouth Roadrunners that were built in 72 that have the 426 Hemi that sn snuck out of the factory. Uh, if you do research, you can find that. Uh, article that says that I haven't seen it physically, but I know, but that's the rumor. So I hope that's true. Scoops on the front of the cornet are also fake. They don't do have no purpose or function whatsoever. Hemi also came standard with front with like disc brakes, front disc brakes standard. They didn't want you to have any drums on it. Heavy duty suspension, heavy duty alternator. It's all part of the package when ordering the engine. It's not just the engine that you pay when you pay the 100 bucks, which is a heavy sum of the, sum of money. Uh, back in 1970. Very powerful car. Same dashboard as the Plymouth cars, if you look at the dash for B bodies. These top of the line cornets are also very expensive, doing like 200 grand, 250 grand for Hemis. Quarter of a million dollars could easily be had for these cars. However, cornets could also have straight sixes and be base model cars. Cornets are the equivalent to roadrunners of the time period, essentially, or satellites, Belvedere model, whatever you want to call it. Cornet was the base model car, and the Charger was the luxury car that was a lot heavier. Came standard with leather interior, V8, stuff like that, whereas the Cornet was more customizable and could be had for a much cheaper price. So it's much like, like the roadrunner, the Dodge version of the roadrunner or satellite. Uh, that's what the Cornet really is. Mazda Cosmo. 12A rotary engine, first of its kind. Mazda continued to experiment with it, doing fuel injection, a little larger displacement, uh, changing the seals, the material is so that it lasts longer. Uh, just constant evolution, but the Cosmo was the first car to have it. Very, very exclusive to the Japanese market. And uh, really is the beginning Japanese refined the whole until 2010s. Hopefully they come back with the RX-10, supposedly. That's what the concept is. And the final stretch for going neck and neck, handling versus acceleration, and top speed. And we go here, I try to match with the braking, and I end up being a little too late and overshoot the corner because I'm trying to compete with a car that's got way better uh, handling characteristics due to less weight. I'm at a uh, thousand pound disadvantage around that uh, weight class the whole full weight class above my opponent but luckily we have straights on Suzuka circuit like this back straight here and we can make up ground very rapidly come up behind very quickly you can see the distance being drawn in come into the last sweeper cor cor corner look contact go into the chicanes gotta get there as soon as possible try to get around them. 
I break early because I'm at a disadvantage in terms of weight. Cut the corners as hard as I can, try and keep up. And then we have the final stretch, which is all biased towards the Hemi. And we can really lay down the power that the Mazda does not have. Inside, outside, he cuts too hard, hits the wall. Game over. Like, comment, subscribe for more content.